One thing that I can be sure of is that having your tongue out helps. It is science. guys welcome to your art tutorial today we are going to be creating this city landscape I know it might look hard but honestly it is something that anybody can do in isolation I have found art to be a godsend and just a really beautiful time for me to be able to escape escape the world for a few hours I know that you will have a really really excellent time so let's get started so first things first, I know it can be so intimidating when you're standing in front of a white canvas and you feel like every move that you're going to do is wrong. Erase those feelings right now because something that I want you to try and remember during this whole process is that first of all, nothing that you do is ever going to be wrong or something that you can't fix. And second of all, try and think about this as more about the experience rather than the final product. When you think about that end result and hoping that you can hang it on your wall or give it to somebody, I think that it adds a whole other layer of pressure that we don't really need when we're trying to have a fun time. So have fun, be fearless, enjoy, and let's get started. I am just going to pop some white on my brush and just pop this straight in the middle of my canvas. Now, actually this canvas for me is uh, wood, as weird as that is, but it was the only canvas that I could buy that was in this size. And so I just got some white acrylic paint on the base, but if you've already got a white canvas, obviously you don't need to do that. Okay, so just placing that straight in the center. I know that you can't see this at the moment, but you will in a second. So with this light yellow, I'm just going to touch a tiny bit of my light yellow and add some white in there to make this really beautiful color. This is going to be the first layer of our sunset. Doesn't really matter where it is on your canvas might be different for everyone and honestly like I say please don't feel like you've already made a mistake you haven't you can't do anything plus we're going to have buildings that are going to cover this so no worries now while you've got that yellow I need to leave a bit of a gap of that white and this yellow is going to be the reflection, the first reflection that we see in this water. So if you imagine your skyline to be here, we've got the sunset and then we've got the reflection on the other side. Just popping that straight in there. Beautiful. Okay, next is to add a tiny bit of red. Now, if you add too much red, your sky will be too bright and it doesn't give you that beautiful warm sunset sorbet sky so try and mix those colors until you can get a really nice soft orange just by adding that white until it's something that you feel might be a better color I might just put honestly just a second more red in there that looks pretty good okay we'll just come straight in here again just a really easy sky just popping in lots of colors here take that orange straight down into that sunset as well Perfect. okay we're going to repeat that process again down in the water see I probably don't have enough paint on here again <laughs> I'm new at this. This isn't this isn't my forte, but it's that's definitely something that can happen if you don't have enough. But try and add mix as much color as you can. Plus, it's really hard to get the same color. So I am going to now remix some color. That's definitely going to be too much red. No worries here. We'll see what happens. No mistakes. Remember, absolutely no mistakes. As Bob Ross would say, just happy, happy, happy accidents. Okay, so for the water this time, I want you to only pull that brush straight in from the center, making it as dark as you can on this opposite side. 
but trying to leave some space in the middle, which is a really easy way to create that reflection of what would be the sun. Okay, next. Next, let's add some red and some purple. And I'm just going to add some white to that. Yeah, I want it to be a little bit more purple than that. You can make this sky any color that you want. We've all seen a sunset. We know that they come in so many different colors. If you choose for this to be a really nice blue and gold, go for gold. There's absolutely no worries in creating the sky that you like. Might just add some more purple in there because it probably was a little bit too red. Yeah. You know what, guys? I'm just going to pop some more purple in here. Oh well, we'll see what happens. Probably too much purple there, Tess. Okay. That looks better. So the other thing to note here is I haven't cleaned my brush at all once, and that makes this process really easy, but also fast. And we like convenience. Okay, let's come straight in with that sky. Coming into dusk again, really just Popping this color straight in there. It should be fast, it should be easy. You can see some yellow coming through in my brush, that's fine. I know I just accidentally picked up some more purple in there. It doesn't matter, it can be any color sky that you like. Again, no mistakes. Not enough color. I told you, I'm learning at the same time. So I'm going to bring this purple dusk all the way through. Excellent. Taking that brush now that it's only got a little bit of colour in here and following that fade. I'm also going to repeat that process. This colour will be slightly different, but it doesn't matter. Again, with this water, I'm trying to pull from one side and leaving some of that colour of that white. which will be the reflection of that water. Great. So I've just cleaned off my brush a little bit because I just want to add some more color in here of that sunset. Probably was a little too sparse on the first pass. So I've just popped some water on my brush and we'll create that effect. That actually worked quite well. So as you can see, cityscape, skyline, sky, water, laughing. Pop those colours aside for the moment. We will come back to them, but we're heading straight into that city. So I am going to change my brush to something where I've got more control. It can truly be any brush, but I like something that's got quite a hard and a flat side, which helps for those details of the buildings and trying to get a straight line. So I'm going to wash off my palette or my plate and replace it with some black. Okay guys, so I have got just plain acrylic black paint and my smaller brush. So I'm just going to pop a second, just a tiny, tiny second of water in there just to help thin it out slightly. And now we're going to place your skyline. My biggest tip is to make sure that you continue to stand back and check that that line is straight. It is really easy to be a little bit wonky, so make sure that you keep on taking a step back and having a look in. Today I am going to be painting the Brisbane city skyline because I live in Brisbane and I'm pretty proud of Brisbane, but you can paint anything that you like. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be anything specific, but I like 
to try and place some of those buildings in there that we all know and can recognize and it's really fun. As you can see at the moment, I'm just placing in black shapes, so absolutely no detail at the moment. And what's really great about this is you can add and you can change things later if you feel like you want to add some more height into a building. For example, I think that there needs to be more differentiation between this building and that building. Easy, so easy to do, so easy to achieve. Some of these buildings will bring into the forefront, some will push to the background, but at the moment we're just blocking out those shapes and those shadows. Have fun. So now that I've got my basic a silhouette skyline in there, I think I might go back and increase some of the size of some of the buildings, especially Meriton. I think that Meriton is a little bit taller than that. Customs House has got a nice dome, Central Plaza, Waterfront Place. I think I, I haven't included all buildings in here, but I've included some, but I really just feel like this Meriton is a little bit taller. Then I have painted it, maybe, maybe even taller again. I think that's probably more accurate. Okay. I, I was hoping that this would be from as if you were standing on the Story Bridge and looking down into the city. That's kind of what I was hoping for with this, or maybe standing at Howard Smith Wharf or something like that and looking back into the city at dusk, which is just my favorite time. I think that the city just glows and it is something so special to see. So hopefully we can capture that in this painting. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Again, can't, oh, I just dropped my paintbrush. 
cannot stress this enough. You can make this up. This doesn't have to come from anything. I, I was just going from any, from memory really. So yeah, don't feel, don't, don't worry too much. Next. I would love for you to add in those highlights into this city, which is absolutely what makes this city come alive. This is a palette knife, a scraper. I, I'm not too sure what it's called, but I bought this in a pack with a bunch of other spatulas uh, for very cheap. It was $2 or something like that. So you can definitely get metal ones of these, but a plastic one works fine. I have also <laughs> done this in my first painting video with a ruler. So anything that's got a flat edge, with that same palette that you were using previously, start to add in some white and we'll go for some yellow. I'll just blend this here maybe a little bit more white so that you get a really nice flat edge filled with paint on this scraper. I am going to start over here with Customs House. I think that that's a pretty good place for us to start. Now imagining that our light source or our sun is coming from the left hand side, that means that most of the highlight should be on the left hand side of the building. I'm probably going to pop some in other areas, but I would hope that they would mostly come from the left side, which will really help to make this look quite accurate. So all I've done here is popped my spatula on where I would like the highlight to be, popped it on very lightly and then pulling off. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing here, popping that on and pulling off because in Customs House it is quite a rounded building so I wanted to be able to hopefully achieve something that looks like that. I am going to go ahead and place in some other highlights on some other buildings. They don't have to be all in the same direction and as you'll see having different highlights coming from different places is exactly what a city looks like. We've got reflective glass, sometimes it's a blue hue, sometimes it's a little bit more orange so have fun and no, no, one more time, but you can't make any mistakes. I promise you, I promise you, there is no wrong to be had here. Make sure that you use some different colors as well to try and get some different colors from those buildings. I quite like having the same palette that you start with because all of your colors are there. It doesn't matter if it looks a little messy, it's perfectly fine. Just placing that down. Let's aim to draw some lines in there. I might actually have this building facing in another direction and how I'm going to achieve that is simply by placing these windows, imagining that they're coming down on a diagonal. So by doing this, it should give us the impression that that building is facing away. Again, no worries about the angle. Doesn't matter how much paint you've got on there. We can always come back and scrape that down to help achieve that. Great. And maybe we'll come in with some white on this building just to, oh, hello, just to say that we've got some lights on. There are some people that are still working in this building. Love it. Again, same for this building. I like to do, you can just start to see how you can change that shape once you add in that vertical line and then starting to add in these highlights. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing here, taking that palette and just pulling it down on the diagonal. Great. Let's draw in another little building in here. I think there's a building that comes in front. I think that's exactly how it is actually. I'll just draw this down this way, no worries. Okay, have fun. One thing that I can be sure of is that having your tongue out helps. It is science.
When you've got buildings in front of each other like that, I like to make sure that the, the highlight is coming from a different direction. I think it just helps to highlight the fact that there is in fact one building in front and one building behind. I'm going to, let's add some more yellow in there, hey? Why not? We love some yellow. So let's draw a yellow line down here. This is a very yellow building, as you can see. Probably a little bit too yellow, Tess. Okay, no worries. I'll show you exactly what we're going to do. Get that black brush again. We'll come in here. We'll give it a clean up. Look at that. Easy. So again, I'm going... I'll fix that. <laughs> no mistakes, right? I'm going to place another little building in here just so that we can really push that building into the background and think that there is one in the foreground. I think that's where another little building lives. So I'm just going to draw that in here in highlight and we can draw in this right there. Perfect, popping that top line in here. There's a lot, there's a lot of sun on that building. So I think that in some of my highlights, I got a little bit too over exuberant over here. So I'm just gonna grab a dry brush, totally dry brush, and let's see if we can blend out some of these highlights. Just, <laughs> she says while well, they're dry. Okay, let's come over here. Let's see if we can have a look at Mr. Yellow Guy. Yeah, great. No worries. Also over here on Mr. White Guy, I'll add in some yellow in there. Yeah, so I wasn't loving that part, so let's let's give it another crack. I'll just paint over it again. It's the beauty about having something that's black is you can literally never not change what you've got. Easy. I might even do Mr. Yellow Guy over here. Kind of like the top of that. that dry for a second and then I'll come back. So I've left Mr. Meriton up here so that I could practice really. But what I'm going to do is hopefully try and achieve some form of a angle in here. So I'm going to draw this line down the front. Excellent. And then from here I'm going to angle this down. We're seeing the top half of the Meriton, excellent from this side. I hope that by me showing you my mistakes, you're really getting the idea that I'm not a professional in all of this but hopefully it'll look okay. It's fun. Art is meant to be fun. Let's place those vertical lines in here. Again, creating that nice angle of our building. Just in there. Might just take that highlight a little bit less.
Let's use a smaller brush now for some more details. This is again just, I bought it in a pack for a couple of dollars. Okay, start bringing a building out this way. We'll just give you, I think another one lives here. Yeah, I think that's exactly where that building lives. like a city the next part I want you to do <laughs> seems frightening okay it's not it will make this painting and cityscape come alive so with that black palette and that black well any brush hopefully hopefully a little bit of a bigger brush this is I think a two inch brush but I don't know. We are going to place the reflection of the buildings in the water. It is really going to make this come alive. Starting off with this big merit in here, let's just drag our brush down where that reflection would be and follow along with these buildings in exactly the places that they are. Okay. I need to be straight on for this, sorry. Perfect. Now we'll just make sure that that water line is in. Grab a dry brush and just run your brush along the water, which will create that ripple effect and blend that in. Amazing. Not scary, huh? Beautiful. Okay, we're so close to being, oh, got my brush. We're so close to being done now. Okay, back with this scraper. Go along this line and where that city ends and where the water starts. So it's a really good idea also here as well to pop in some lines that aren't on that wall. <laughs> Maybe not like that. That aren't on that line, just so that it will give the impression of water. Try and pop them close together at the start and then add in some more just a little bit further. Oh, goodness, just a little bit further away as well. This technique is absolutely coined by Bob Ross to create this water effect, which is so, so, so effective as you can see. So he's got some great tutorials. I have watched more hours than I would like to share watching his technique. And there is so much that you can learn from this truly incredible man. What I might do, I might just grab again that dry brush and I'll pop it in some white and brush it off. Again, don't be worried. I hope I say that now. Let's, let's actually drop it off a little bit more. Okay, let's just pop that exactly what should have happened. That's perfect. Really just those edges of that brush and we'll just, <laughs> okay, oh, spoke too soon. Drag it across 
and we'll create that water effect. I think that's nice. Okay, let's just add in a couple of things down in here. Honestly, it's so far in the background, no one's going to see, but perhaps there are some lights down here. Eagle Street Pier is having a great time. So I think that we've got some lights, some red lights and some yellow lights over here on the pier. Let's also just pop some white in here. I think we should also add in just a couple of vertical lines just to add some difference on that shoreline. And what I might even do is just come along here with some black on my palette and I might just give that a little bit more of some depth along there now. Do you know what guys? I think that's it. I think we're done. I hope that you are truly so proud of what you've created today, whether it is Brisbane city or another city or a city in your imagination, I'm sure that it looks phenomenal. And I really, really hope that you're proud of yourself. Art is something that anybody can do. And I know it feels so intimidating when you first start, but look at what you've created. And if you do, if you do, make sure you send me a photo. Send me a photo on Instagram because I am your biggest cheerleader and I can't wait to see you create your own cityscape.